growing up, I always valued fairness, equity, and things just being just. I remember when I was five years old, I was at a Halloween party, and I'm dressed up in my trademarked ninja costume. And I say trademark because, let my mom tell it, I was a ninja like five or six times throughout childhood. And I remember I was eavesdropping. Well, that's what ninjas do. And as I'm eavesdropping, I overhear that my mother had some unpaid parking tickets. So me with my strong values, I had the bright idea to call the police on my own mother. <laughs> so I pick up the phone, 911. I think I like hung up because I was scared or something. But the police arrived, and it gets kind of confusing at this point because it's a Halloween party, so people basically thought they were just trying to get in the party. <laughs> you can imagine everybody's face when they found out that I was the person that called the police. My mom still tells this story to this day. So I hope you realize values are important to me. So important I called the cops on my own mother. They became a research interest, and I started studying values, both personal and organizational, especially facade creation, where we adopt values that we don't believe in for profit and privilege. So as children, we only wear masks on Halloween. But when we grow up and enter the workplace, we become masters of manipulating how we show up. Whether that's through mimicry or facade creation, adopting values we don't believe in, wearing the mask. As I grew, I've coached thousands of employees and leaders in various organizations. And one thing that really stuck with me was the notion of people having to adopt values that they didn't believe in. And I just saw the pain and the stripe that they had to go through. So, you know, me and HR, I'm like, you know, why does that matter? You're getting a paycheck, remember? You need better work-life balance. But what I forgot was that very same experience happened to me in my first job out of college. So I got my degree. The whole world's in front of me, right? And I go to my first job, and I'm thinking, you know, I'm led to believe my knowledge, skills, and abilities, I'd be able to help the customer and improve the customer's experience. But when I got there, the only thing that mattered was profit. That's what I was being indoctrinated in. That mask was too heavy to wear. I lasted two weeks. So that experience brought me to study this construct and start working on something I call the workplace masquerade. And today I want to kind of talk to you about what to look for to let you know if you're in it or not. These hallmarks to look for are called the four horsemen of fakeness. <laughs> that first horseman is diversity over inclusion. Let me be clear, diversity over inclusion is different than diversity and inclusion. Can I say that again? Diversity over inclusion is different than diversity and inclusion. What happens in these spaces is, yeah, we're diverse. We got all the numbers, look at our demographics. Look at our pretty photos on the wall. Looks like the United Nations in here. <laughs> <laughs> but what tends to happen is we're only inclusive if you think and act like us. So I ask you, some may think that whole notion of fit is easier to work in, but I question, easier for who? The second horseman to look out for is something called cultural theater. So you've all heard about organizational culture. You know the importance. We've all heard that song and dance. But what tends to happen is we are putting on a facade ourselves as an organization, and we engage in what's called cultural theater, the act of leading people to believe you're changing the culture. So it's February 29th, leap year, right? Plenty of uh, companies celebrated Black History Month. Oh, look out. In June, we're going to adopt our pride logos. 
but we're not going to be inclusive where it really counts. Think about who's getting promoted. Who has that seat at the table? Whose voices are being lifted up? How do they operate during times of dissent? The third horseman is courage. So courage and vulnerability are essential to have in any workplace. And I would argue in this masquerade, it's actually needed the most, but it seldom occurs. What tends to happen is you probably all had an experience where you had that bright idea. You wanted to be different, and you voiced your opinion. You probably remember the frowns, the eye rolling, and even the overt invalidation. That only needs to happen one or two times for you to know that the status quo is the way to go. The fourth and final horseman is avoidance. This masquerade is characterized by an undercurrent of avoidance, avoidance of conflict. So we got this thing called toxic niceness, avoidance of truth. We then, in turn, avoid to do the work to truly operate as ourselves. So these horsemen really impact the organization, but I want to share with you what it could do to you as an individual. So Corn Ferry is a management consulting company, and through work, they found that 76% of respondents related to stress indicated that their workplace stress manifested in their personal relationships back home. That alone seems dire. On top of that, 66% reported that they had a lack of sleep as a result. So you're telling me you got projection of stress to those that are closest to you and sleep loss? I don't want to work with that person. <laughs> Adding into that, 16% reported that they, they, they quit their jobs. So I know many of you in the audience are like, well, yeah, I'll deal with the stress. I'm not going to quit my job. <laughs> Let me tell you what you're getting yourself into. So the next outcome to think about is something called burnout. Burnout has been recognized by the World Health Organization and the International Classification of Diseases. Burnout is listed as a special work-related stress that manifests in our physical and emotional exhaustion that leads to a reduced of personal accomplishment and a loss of personal identity. Burnout has been linked to numerous psychological impact, and if I just isolated depression and anxiety alone, the World Health Organization estimates that that'll cost about a trillion dollars in lost productivity in the United States per year. These statistics sound scary, but most of you are not going to do anything about it. Let me tell you why. So if you've ever seen The Mask with Jim Carrey, you probably remember that even though The Mask provided him with power and protection, he still tried to get rid of it. Like the movie, the masks we all wear are hard to get rid of. And I want to talk about two reasons why. The first is something called social mobility. There's research that indicates that we don this mask, this facade, for social, career, and financial success. We profit from privilege. What this mask does is it erroneously sends us the false narrative that whoever is under your mask is not worthy of reward. There's a lot of research related to social media, and I'm sure you remember if you're scrolling through Instagram, a lot of people are beating themselves up. They're scrolling. They're comparing themselves to others. But what we don't realize is we are comparing ourselves, our true selves, what's under our mask, to everyone else wearing theirs. Wearing a mask is not the concept of fake it to make it. Think about this. The moment you make it, you're already bought in. The mask has conditioned you to further engage in the facade. 
So think about the external factors, and these external factors serve as the glue that holds your mask in place. Think about those factors and why you wear your mask. Financial, psychological safety, or something else. The next factor to explore is an internal emotion that I'm sure we're all familiar with, fear. Some of us are afraid to reveal who we truly are for fear of being too different, for fear of not being accepted, for fear of being alone. Social acceptance theory even examines the notion that ultimately we want to be a part of the group. We want to be like others. And the research even pegs out that we sometimes talk and act like people just to be a long part of that group. I'm sure you all have plenty of photos you can look at, and you can see like, wow, I'm following trends I absolutely, I absolutely hated just to be liked, just to be part of the group. You can look at me today, and you probably won't believe this. I used to wear like super baggy pants, like extremely baggy where I would walk on them and it would eat the bottoms up, and, and dress shirts. Oh, well, not dress shirts. These were like dress shirts. They were like 6X t-shirts. I need to burn all those photos, by the way. <laughs> so think about those internal glue that holds your mask in place. Because like I said before, this is not the concept of fake it to make it. This may very well be fake it to break it. And the it that you're breaking is the tie to your sense of self. So I know you're probably thinking, Kevin, what do we do with these insurmountable challenges? Well, today I want to talk to you about one thing we can walk away with. And for me, loosening the grips of the mask required awareness. Everybody take out your cell phones right now and take a selfie. Seriously, I can see you. Take, take, take your cell phones out. <laughs> Let's all take a selfie. Take your selfies, yes. <laughs> don't, don't take a picture of me. <laughs> now, now, take a look at your photo. What are, the, what are the top three things that come to mind when you're looking at yourself? Think about that. For me, this awareness required me to evaluate who I am based on what I think and who I am based on what others think. And believe me, there was a difference. So again, look at your photo. What perspective are you taking? What point of view are you taking? So y'all saw my TEDx photo? I looked at my TEDx photo and I was like, oh my God, that guy's a nerd with, like, with those glasses on. Like, uh. <laughs> now I don't know if that's an exter internal, external, I don't know where that comes from, but that's what I thought. Ultimately, we, we manage impressions. We manage impressions to be like others, to fit in with others. Your mask didn't just appear yesterday. I like to think that the mask is comprised of many different experiences and events that we go through. You should look this way, get this degree, talk this way, dress this way. And on top of that, it's backed by some pretty sticky glue. As you walk away and reflect, I hope you join me on this journey of authenticity. Is the mask you wear today the person you want to be tomorrow? Thank you.